Now, we will cover a class exercise. This was also part of your homework. We have such a system. So this system was defined in a paper by Edwards et al. in 2002. Again, a paper by Parsons Group. And it is a simple, about 10 reactions. And the system mimics a generic metabolic network. So carbon comes in, and with the use of ATP, it is converted to B. So this part represents upper glycolysis. Remember, ATP has to be used in the upper glycolysis to convert 6-carbon uh, glucose to fructose diphosphate. And this part, as you see, B is converted to C here with ATP and NADH production. So this part represents lower glycolysis where pyruvate is produced and ATP and NADH production is observed. And then comes this part, you see the cycle. It represents TCA cycle. So very simple, C goes to C. And NADH production is observed here. And then, so the C is pyruvate. So there are two alternatives. If there is no oxygen, right? If there is no oxygen available, C will be converted to some products. Here you see NADH. So the extra NADH produced in glycolysis here will be balanced by the consumption, by its consumption here in the production of E. So fermentative pathway. And if there's oxygen available, then oxygen will be used in oxidative phosphorylation to convert NADH to ATP. So TCA cycle will be active. And there's also a reaction which defines the formation of biomass from the precursors. So in this very simple metabolic network. C, pyruvate, is the only metabolic precursor. And in the anabolic reactions, lots of ATP is required, right? This is growth-associated ATP. So this is how biomass reaction is represented. So in order to solve this system, first you need to construct S, L, B, U, B, B vectors, right? And you need to check, of course, if this system is underdetermined or not. If it is underdetermined, you can use Linprog of MATLAB to solve for unknown rates. There are two alternatives uh, in the question. The first one is if uptake of rate of A, which represents carbon, is one, and uptake rate of oxygen is four. In this case, what is the maximal biomass rate? And in the second case, if while A is still one, oxygen uptake rate is three or 2.5, what will be maximal biomass production rate? What will be the growth rate? So this was also part of your homework. In the homework, I asked you to uh, calculate, to, to identify 
or to um, construct the stoichiometric matrix and lower bound and upper bound vectors for this system. So my question is, what is the size of your stoichiometric matrix uh, that you have constructed for this system? And what is the total number of actions you defined for the system? Reactions are already given here. So if you just look at this table, you will see uptake of A, uptake of oxygen, and secretion of C, D, and E as the exchange reactions. So if I count it from here, there are five exchange reactions. Is it enough to use to solve this system? So I'm repeating my questions. What is the size of stoichiometric matrix that you constructed? And what is the number of exchange reactions that you defined in constructing this stoichiometric matrix? So one of the students says there are um, six exchange reactions defined. Why six, not five? And in this table, only 13 reactions defined. And uh, while waiting for your answers, let me count the number of uh, intracellular metabolites in this system. So I have A, ATP, NADH, O2, D, E, C, and B. So if I count it like this, it is eight metabolites and 13 reactions. So you should always remember how we construct the differential mass balances. Here the key point is this reaction. It is represented differently in the sketch and in the table. You see in the table, we see that A, C, D, O, 2, E, they are represented as exchange reactions. There is also one ATP maintenance reaction defined, use of ATP for other processes vital for the cell. If 
we use the reaction like this. Then Rz, this reaction must be written as C plus 10 ATP goes to somewhere because biomass is not within the solution boundary. So if you use this system, the, the sketch, you should write the corresponding reaction in your matrix like this uh, without counting biomass as a metabolite. But if you take this reaction system as your basis, and if you want to count biomass as a metabolite, then you should add another reaction to your system that defines the release or secretion of biomass from your solution uh, boundary, from your system's boundary. So if your stoichiometric matrix is 8 by 13, then biomass should not be among your metabolites. Or if biomass is among your metabolites, you should also add the biomass secretion reaction to your system ending up with nine metabolites because biomass you also consider biomass as a metabolite and 14 reactions with the secretion of biomass of course biomass is not something that is secreted but if you consider it as a metabolite Remember the principle of flux balance analysis. If biomass is produced within your system, it needs to be balanced, it needs to be consumed at an equal rate. So to ensure this balance around the biomass, you add this reaction to your system and the rate of this reaction will already be equal to the rate of this reaction. So both alternatives 8 by 13 stoichiometric matrix or 9 by 14 stoichiometric matrix they will give you the same results